Uh, food is too tasty now. This, this kind of plays on what we were just talking about. How do, they have this individual, they came up with a way, various scientists actually, at the University of, of Kansas, they, they published some research relating to o obesity. They came up with this term hyperpalatability. This is the idea uh, the, via their research that certain foods are just terrible for our brain, brain chemistry. Certain combinations of foods, we don't have control over our reaction to them or our ability to uh, manage consumption of them. Certain combinations, you know, you're eating chips and, and, and you get that moment of why am I reaching for more? I, I just don't even feel like them, but somehow you're almost on autopilot. You grab some next chips. Yeah, you just can't have one. Is that Lay's? Lay's uh, slogan. Yeah. It's baked in. Well, fried. There are baked Lay's as well. They're terrible, obviously, compared. <laughs> uh, so they, what they were trying to do via this study is put actual palatability scores on food and say to, to people who struggle with uh, diet, say, just avoid this crazy hyper stuff. Go ahead and have dessert. Just where is it on the palatability score? Because then you can shut it down before you've taken it too far. The researchers found that combinations of certain foods of ingredients create hyper palatability, certain combinations of certain types of ingredients. Combinations of fat and sodium, hot dogs, bacon, combinations of fat and simple sugar, cake, ice cream, brownies, and combinations of carbohydrates and sodium, pretzels, popcorn. Uh, these are the most dangerous types of combinations, supposedly. Hmm. And their findings showed that 62% of foods in the Department of Agriculture's Food and Nutrient Database met the definition of hyperpalatability, including 49% of I items labeled as low, reduced, no sugar, fat, sodium, and or sugar. But I feel like I've actually experienced this where... If I, maybe I have a, a healthy snack, Will, um, you know what I've been eating a lot lately is uh, peas, like the snap peas. The snap peas. They're great. They're crunchy. It's a textual thing. They have a little bit of sweetness to them. Yeah. I sit there, I snack. It's a wonderful time. But I don't have that same, if you bust out the popcorn, which happens at my house from time to time, when are you done with the popcorn? Hmm. When are you done with the popcorn? No, no, that's a real uh, question. Uh, until it's finished. Yeah, that's you right. Know, I mean. You're never done with the, What kind of a. Because you know it's going to go bad and then you feel bad. So you got to finish it. You finish the right? popcorn. Yeah. It's also just the way you eat it. And it's, it's a bowl. And it's crunch. It's got a crunch and a salt. And it's just easy to keep going. There, do you ever, sometimes there's foods you just don't want anymore. And natural foods. <laughs> For real, try and eat a bowl, try and eat an entire bowl of kale. You're tapping out. <laughs> raw onion. A, a, a bowl of raw broccoli, you Crap. tap out. It is not hyper palatable. You tap out before you're full. Mm -hmm. You're just chewing a lot. The I mean, fibrous they stuff. On this, on this article, they show a picture of a piece of pizza, a slice of pizza. It has pepperoni, cheese, bread, carbohydrate, fat, sodium. You're dead. You are dead. St try to stop midway through that slice. Try to take the one bite that person took. You put pineapple on. The exactly, then you get the sweet there, and now you are... Super mega hyper palatable. You're dead. You will you will not see tomorrow if you do that. Uh, anyway, they're saying that via the research, they can now suggest that rather than cutting out all desserts or all chips, for example, 
Consumers might only need to avoid those that meet the nutritional definition definition of hyperpalatability. So in a way, you can pick stuff that isn't going to redline your brain and your taste buds and throw you into psycho mode. But instead, maybe you can intentionally pick a chip that tastes worse. Hmm. So then you know when to tap out. You can actually, you actually have enough control in the moment to say, oh yeah, I'm eating chips right now. I can taste the fact that I'm done with these chips. Hmm. I have six and I'm done. It's palatable, but not hyper. Right. You because if you walk middle ground, if you walk through, through the supermarket, well, as you would, I know you do. It's an odd concept to think, I'm going to buy stuff that doesn't taste that good. I'm going to buy stuff that just tastes okay. Yeah, and actually you have to make it. It's, it's a whole thing, too. <laughs> Go on. You know, like if I have to buy potatoes, I know I have to cook it, which does take time. But Where I, are you feel, going with I, feel, I feel good about it because it is not the best tasting but it's actually knowing that it's nutritious and oh it's i not see where you're going you're saying picking the real ingredients instead of the prepared stuff that's easier yes yeah i mean i there's like a pizza section i can just go there and it's like literally have a pizza so while easy. i'm grocery shopping but then like you know there is appreciation to getting like the the nutritious stuff okay but here's eat. here's what i'm suggesting well i'm saying you go th through the supermarket and there's a rack of chips that are delicious right above them it says a headline delicious next to that is a rack of chips that says less delicious which rack is going to be empty and which one's going to be full but it's a weird concept imagine showcasing your discipline and saying i don't need the most delicious one Today, I'm fine with the less delicious one, which is still delicious. It's just less delicious. It's weird. When it comes to food, we don't put a limitation on delicious. We say maximum. We select max. All the time. Now, imagine elsewhere in your life if you always, imagine if you got in your car and you selected max. Max speed on the way home. You're dead. But because the food thing happens slowly, you die slowly. You say, yeah, yeah cool. it's I, not, it's I want not delicious. Right. Yeah. Today I want delicious. Yeah. So, so, but it's a, it's a weird relationship we have with it. But you would choose snap peas over chips. Yes. Right? Absolutely. Even though it might not be the most delicious, you would still choose them. Yeah, and I, and I do all the time. But what I'm suggesting, what I'm saying here is that everyone knows the snap peas are not chips. What I'm saying it is- It could be a good substitute. Re no, but what I'm saying is replace the product category. Let's say they come up with this designation of hyper palatability hmm. that we're talking about. Imagine if every object in the supermarket had a score. Right. I'm saying, are people capable? Do people have the discipline necessary to look at that and say, I'm intentionally going to pick in the same product category something that tastes worse? Because I'm yeah. saying we do it elsewhere in life all the time. We say to ourselves, we showcase discipline and say, I don't need to do the craziest version of it. Yeah. I, I don't. Speed is a good example with the car, but I'm sure there's other. I don't need a thousand dollar phone. Sure. You get a mid well, well, with cost, with money, phone. we do that too. We, we're able to showcase the yeah. fact that we don't have to be crazy with it, not with taste. Well, that's why I want to do it. You want to do that, stuff. Yes. The tastiest stuff. Okay, so Kirk says it's biological. Hence them finding that it does, it messes with our brain chemistry. This mm. stuff, this combination of ingredients. Of course, that biology would have evolved during a period in which we would have only had access. We wouldn't have had access to some of these comp. You didn't have pizza! No, but in, in our past, we would hoard, right? Yeah, but, yeah, but how much of it do you want to eat? Without the combinations we're talking about, you just tap out. You're just, that, I've had enough. Okay, I'm good. Like, your brain trigger is correct when you're dealing with real natural foods. Your brain works. It yes. says, okay, you're done. But it doesn't work with popcorn. And it doesn't work with chips. They're saying they found that in their study. So you need to know if you know, if you have the knowledge going into it to work with it, do you select those items at all? If you know they're... Uh, wreaking havoc on your brain chemistry. I think it's subjective. 
there are times when you know there's moderation and then other times you kind of just go all out that's why cheat day exists yeah but but what i'm suggesting is 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 that the healthiest way to do it the idea at all of subjecting your brain to this onslaught do we have a choice i guess you could stay away from delicious things that's that seems terrible that sounds terrible <laughs> yeah, it's, uh... but imagine if everything in the supermarket had a score it was 96 or if they came up with a way through this research to put a palatability score mm. of how much it's going to destroy uh like the potency of a drug like when you're buy, when you're when you're shopping at the beer stores, you know five percent alcohol. Imagine if the food had a palatability rating, yeah. palatability rating. Hmm. Would the store be wiped out of the tens, and just or, yeah, people would buy. It's it's bizarre that a taste rating mm -hmm. backed by science. I think people would feel guilty walking out with a cart full of tens. Be, be, the cashier be looking at you like, geez, what do you need in your life? Relax. Yeah. Get a couple fours in there. Get a three in there. You got to be a 10 every time you take a bite? Mm -hmm. Relax. But you see, if you walk out with a tub of Ben and Jerry's, a bag of popcorn, and some Lay's, no one cares. They're like, all right, that's a night. You're having a night. Mm -hmm. You're having a time. Mm -hmm. That's all there is to it. Look, I don't. This could be a depressing concept because now you're saying you can quantify everything. Can't you just enjoy yourself? But that's human. As we've done that with almost everything else. Yes. So it's a it's some interesting research. What they're what they're also saying is that some people it affects more, and of course obesity is some kind of epidemic, diabetes and things like this. And maybe certain people's brain chemistry it's not. Mm -hmm. They're picking these things and and legit can't. Cut it off at the right Can't point. Put it down, yeah. Can't, and and that's that's a that's an intense concept. People came in and they said what they said about vapes. People came in and they said what they said about cigarettes. Maybe in a hundred years, people will look at that tub of ice cream the same way. I don't know. I'm just a guy. I'm just I'm just talking today. Today I'm just talking. Maybe uh, people should get hypnotized or something. <laughs> I heard that works. <laughs> Willie Doo's also talking today. I'll tell you Quit what. Quit smoking kind of thing.